The Milky Way is made up of many galaxies, and Earth is one of them. But how does our galaxy fit into the framework of the universe as a whole? Indeed, our galaxy home is not alone, it is an important part of a much bigger structure that pulls many other galaxy groups into its orbit with its huge gravity. However, this is where things get tricky. As astronomers have long thought that our galaxy is part of the Launakia supercluster. However, a recent surprise finding shows that we may have been wrong about this. Instead, the new information shows that we are being pulled closer to itself by a much stronger force. This force has the second largest gravitational well in the local universe and is slowly but surely becoming stronger. Albert Einstein had a very good understanding of how the universe works and how it all fits together. When quantum mechanics came out in the 1920s, it wasn't possible to say for sure where a particle would be at any given time, or even if it would still be a particle. Einstein wrote to his friend and fellow physicist Max Born, The theory gives us a lot, but it doesn't bring us any closer to the mystery of the ancient one that's God. No matter what, I'm sure he doesn't play dice. So, the man who came up with the theory of relativity was sure until the day he died in 1955 that the universe works on the fixed principle of cause and effect, that it's built on clear rules, and that the old one leaves nothing to chance. And if we apply this idea from talking about quantum physics to the show in space, we can see that the divine dice can definitely stay in their cup in this case. As it turns out, Galaxies and galaxy clusters don't just move through space at random. They are strongly connected to invisible currents that are led by big differences in how dense matter is. If you want, you can say that the structures of the universe look like a kind of stacked, big Russian doll when they are all lined up together. Of course, Earth is part of the solar system, and the solar system is part of the Milky Way. We live in an amazing galaxy that is 100,000 light years across and has about 200 billion stars. But we must not forget that in the grand scheme of things, it is just one piece of a very large puzzle. In fact, the Milky Way is an important part of the so-called local group, which is a group of about 30 full-fledged galaxies and 70 known dwarf galaxies. There are about 100 to 200 galaxy groups in the Virgo supercluster which is made up of the local group. The Virgo supercluster is itself made up of the Lanakia supercluster. This huge megastructure is 520 million light years across and holds about 100,000 galaxies. The dislike like the shapely supercluster or the Sloan Great Wall, it also draws things to it. It's about huge gravity wells that pull galaxies and galaxy groups together over a large area. On the other hand, there are objects in the vastness of space that have the exact opposite trait. In the end, the galaxy pore gaps, also known as the dipole repeller, are known for pushing galactic groups away from them. But let's get back to the shear force sinks. To give you a better idea of how powerful they are, experts compare them to river systems on land. The natural terrain shapes the path of water and the way cosmic objects move is shaped by the way space is curved by attractors. That sounds great in theory, but which of these forces has actually stretched out its gravitational pull on the Milky Way? That is the exact question, what are the gravitational megastructures of the nearby universe? In fact, we thought we knew the answer for a long time. 8,000 galaxies were looked at in a study that came to the clear conclusion that our galaxy home is in the Linikia supercluster. But in astronomy, results aren't always thought to be true until they are tested again. That's what the experts around Alien Veled from the University of Marseilles and the Lamb Institute for Astrophysics in Poem have now done. Scientists used the data sets from the Cosmic Flows 4 study for their test of galaxies. These datasets showed not only the positions and movements of 8,000 galaxies, but also those of 56,000 galaxies with a diameter of 1 billion light years. But how do you even put together such a huge amount of information into an appropriate context? The first thing the astronomers had to do was use special algorithms based on cosmological factors to figure out how each galaxy should move. 
They looked for set patterns that would help them figure out where the big attractors were and what area they were drawing in. So the experts were able to figure out not only how likely it was that such an attractor existed, but also whether a certain point in space was connected to it. The new dataset was seven times bigger than the old one, so they were able to make a full 3D model that showed the currents and large-scale gravitational structures of the local universe with more information than had ever been possible before. In particular, it was the Sloan Great Wall stood out right away as one of them. When you take into account all the structures that are connected to it, it really is the gravitational big player in the local world. The huge galaxy wall is the longest known continuous object in the universe, stretching for at least 1.37 billion light years. Based on the idea of large structure, large catchment area, the Sloan Great Wall covers 500 billion cubic light years. This means that its pull is about twice as strong as the Shapley Superclusters, which is the next strongest attraction. But there's more to the story than that. The two giants' gravity fields could end up being even stronger. In the model, they are limited by the edge of the data field, after all. Because of this, scientists think that the gravitational pools are even bigger in real life than they appear on paper. But what does the Milky Way have to do with big stars in space? Well, as we already said, it was thought that our galaxy was part of the Laniakea supercluster, but a new study makes this description very questionable. Have we got our home planet wrong? As it turns out, astronomers say that the flows of the Milky Way are going to two different gravitational wells. The chosen endpoint is not the Laniaka supercluster as was thought before, but the Shapley supercluster. In more depth, this is true for almost 60% of the structures that were looked at, but only about 40% are moving toward the Laniaka supercluster as a result. On the other hand, this new discovery could only mean that our Milky Way does not belong to Laniaki at all, but to Shapley. But this might not only be true for the local group in the end, but also for other parts of the Laniaki supercluster that we have mislabeled so far. The cosmic question is what does this mean? It doesn't change anything that we might have to find a new place in space to live. A move like this through the galaxy does have a lot of possibilities for science. As it turns out, the latest study also gives experts brand new information about the gravitational landscape of the nearby universe. As an example, the results show how galaxies and other structures change over time and what causes affect those changes. When applied to a bigger picture, this could even help scientists get a better sense of how the world and its matter are distributed, which are both very complicated and hard to understand. It's a whole different story if we can also figure out the history of the scary dark river with more accuracy than ever before. There is one thing we must not forget structures as huge as the Sloan Great Wall or the Shapley Supercluster already stretch our imaginations, but there may be even more terrifying structures out there. A NASA working group led by Alexander Kishlinsky found out a few years ago that 1,400 galaxy clusters move in a way that seems very regular. This can only be explained by a strong gravitational pull. We can't say what kind of attractor this is, though, because its source seems to be outside of the observable world. Kishlinsky still believes that the readings are not a statistical fluke, even though his co-workers have said otherwise. He, too, can only guess about what the dark flow is really like because he doesn't have any hard facts. We don't have enough information to see what it is or narrow it down, he says in this case. We know for sure that the world far away is very different from what we see here. We're not sure if it's a different world or a different path through space and time. We do know, though, how the thumbs up registration works. Click the like and subscribe button right now to make sure you never miss another video from us.